All we right, are live. Guys, we are live. And today, we're going to be doing an actual live episode of this podcast. Yes, we can still see your comments. Yes, we are still going to interact with you. But we have a full episode, so let's get it started. On today's episode of the Blue Bloods, we're back. We have a full slate of college football games this weekend. Well, that's if you use full slate of college football games as liberally as you possibly can. Uh, but we do have enough games for Zach and I to bring back the OG segment, and that is Pick 6. Everyone knows it. Everyone loves it. And we're bringing it to you fresh this week. Um, are they games that we would normally be excited about? Not necessarily, but we are this time because guess what? We are COVID-ridden, and Zach and I about two months ago thought we would not have football at all. We didn't know how we were going to stretch this podcast on any longer. But we did it, guys. We're back. Um, and, and after that, guys, we're going to move on to our second uh, segment. It's another classic. Everyone knows it. Storyline of the week. Um, then we move on to Brandon's Gambling Corner. Yet another classic. I mean, we're hitting you with all, all of the OG segments this week. Um, after that, guys, you know, whether you win or lose money in that one, we're going to move on. We're going to cross that bridge when we get there. And we're going to answer your questions. So we do have a segment this week where we are just going to answer fan questions. Um, it may be if your question is relevant to the subject, we'll get there You know, during the segment at hand. Maybe if you have a question about Central Arkansas and UA UAB, we can, we can address that during the segment. Other than that, we're going to push a lot of the questions onto that fan, uh, fan question segment just so that we can have everything structured. We're posting this episode as a real episode of our podcast. Uh, which is super exciting. It's first live episode. Uh, after that, guys, we have a few huge announcements. Uh, I know we say that a lot and that we don't follow. Like we have things that we, that we're keeping under wraps this time. We actually have announcements and we are going to get to those at the end of this episode. So you know what guys, it's that time again, strap in, sit back. I mean, maybe even crack one open and let's go. And that's that's the theme song right there, guys. If, you, if you're not aware with the with the I'm podcasting, say, uh, I'm about to say that, that that's the that's the intro. But man, kick it off with pick six, man. I mean, it's this is a, this is definitely a throwback for me at least. I mean, we ain't we haven't got to pick games, and there was a while there where I thought this segment was dead in the water. We were just gonna have to talk hypothetical games. We we're gonna have to maybe recap the 2019 18 season. We're gonna have to go way back in the day. For this segment, but Brandon, we're kicking it off with Central Arkansas and UAB. UAB is an 18 point favorite. Nope, you, nope, nope, nope. Be up, be up to date, Zach. 19 up. and a half point favorite. Oh, okay. Well, 19 and a half point favorite. So UAB expected to dominate. Uh, Brandon, your thoughts on this game? I mean, look, <laughs> do, do I think that UAB will dominate? No. Do I think they're going to win? Yes. Do I think they're going to dominate? No. I mean, UAB, people forget this a lot. Not a great football team. Um, Central Arkansas, also not great. You know, I haven't seen that much of them. We did get a sneak peek of them last week. Uh, we saw we saw what they had against uh, Austin P. but that's Austin P. Uh, they did pull out that win there in the second half. I don't know. There were a few things that tricked my dumb brain to thinking that Central Arkansas is probably better than they truly are. Um, but I don't know. There, there's something about UAB football and them bouncing back. It's like, what is this, like their fourth season since football was just canceled at the school? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like, like UAB is a power five team when they're not. You know, they're not, yeah. they're not great. I mean, I've, I understand. I mean, I'm the, the, the biggest storyline surrounding is surrounding this game and it's sad to even address it but we had to talk about it here is this this game's going to weigh so heavy on the hearts of of the UAB players um and their coaches about 3 weeks ago the, there there was a true freshman Alec Merrick that was actually murdered in Gatson Alabama on his trip home and so expectations and emotions are going to be running super, super high on UAB, which is why I do actually think they're going to dominate this game. I think the first game back after a tragedy like that, I don't even care who they are playing. They're going to they're going to go out there and give it their all. And they're going to really, really show out for their fallen teammate here. And, you know, you talked about Central Arkansas. 
Huge win in Montgomery last week. I think the confidence will be in an all-time high, but let's be honest here. The the challenge is much tougher. UAB is a much better team than Austin P. Uh, Breland Smith last week, he was decent, but he needs to play better this week to win. This UAB secondary is uh, is probably one of the best secondaries they'll face all season and could be one of the best in the group of five conferences. Two interceptions by Smith last week. Almost cost him the game. If he throws another two interceptions, it could get real, real ugly for Central Arkansas. I think Kier Crosley, he's got to take some pressure off of Smith. He was a huge factor last week in the win, 110 yards rushing, one touchdown, only 12 carries. He's got to be a bigger factor. And for UAB, I mean, it's going to be one of the best teams in the Sun Belt and actually could make a run at the conference championship this year. That might surprise me. Hold on now. That's Conference yeah. USA, my friend. Yeah, that that's fine. They're gonna make a run. Um, yeah, they're, they're gonna, <laughs> gonna make a run. I know, I wrong conference, but yeah, they're gonna make a run at it. Dejon Turner, Brandon, cornerback, arguably one of the most dominant DBs in the entire group of five. He had the highest coverage grade for all group of five DBs last year and had more interceptions and pass breakups than first downs allowed last season. So yeah, that's a huge, huge stat there. And then you pair him with with uh, Bronte Harris, the other cornerback, who missed all of last season with a back injury. He, this is a dynamic duo that can wreak havoc. Harris, Brandon, last year ranked fifth, in, or not last year, 2017-18, ranked fifth in pass coverage for group of five DBs and only had a 40% catch rate throughout those two years. Huge numbers from him. and had three interceptions and 13 pass breakups in true freshman to sophomore year. And then, Brandon, Jordan Smith, Florida Gator, former four-star transfer, a 6'7 DN who's finally el- eligible and is going to absolutely wreak havoc in this conference and could wreak havoc in this game. Because we saw last week they did have a little bit of problem protecting Breland Smith. Central Arkansas had an amazing week. But for me, Brandon, this is going to come tumbling down fast, at, especially in Birmingham. I have UAB, and I have UAB big in this game. Let's get a prediction up. So if you have them so big, what, what's your score prediction for this game? Uh, I, I know what I think it's going to be UAB 45 Central Arkansas 7. Uh, no, there's no chance UAB scores that many points. They're, they're a rush-heavy offense, um, and I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, I'm going to go UAB 30, 31. Central Arkansas, let's let's go 14. Hey, I'll, I'll take it. You know what? UAB for the win for both of us, guys. We got another game, though. This one's a little bit personal for Brandon. It's it South is. Alabama at Southern Miss. Last time I looked, Brandon's gonna, probably going to call me out. Southern Miss was a 13-and-a-half-point favorite. Not yet. No, well, That's it's not, 13. You were okay, closer. 13. Okay, so these things change a lot. But, Brandon, this game is exciting. I mean – you went to Southern Miss. We're both from Mobile with South Alabama. Who do you have winning the Battle of the Brandon? To the top. To the top. To the top is all I'm going to say. I mean, it's – it's. I'm going to save this because I, I, I'm going to address it again later down the road. But this game, Southern Miss is absolutely disgraced by a 13-point spread. I mean, that's, that's rude. They're playing in Hattiesburg. They're playing at the Rock, and you're going to give them 13 points. That's it? Why is the spread getting closer? People are betting on South Alabama. I saw I saw the breakdown. I think right now 51% of the bets in Vegas are going towards South Alabama covering the spread. Yeah. Uh, no one no one has seen South Alabama play football apparently. You know, <laughs> South Alabama so. <laughs> South Alabama changes coaches like I change clothes so like twice a day. Um, it's not man, I, they can't get anything consistent going on. Southern Miss, they're a little bit more consistent, I'd say. Uh, the only reason they're not is because their coaches aren't getting fired. Their coaches are getting promoted to to better jobs. Ever heard of Larry Fedora or Todd Munkin? Because yeah. Todd Munkin is about to be telling Tom Brady what to do on the field this fall. Um, so, uh, look, Southern Miss to the top. They win this game big. Yeah, I I don't I think it's the same. I, I got the same argument, but Southern Miss returns a lot of talent, and that front seven is pretty good. Um, Jack Abraham at quarterback, he's back again. Let's go. 
he looks. I think he makes a run at four thousand yards during his senior year. He well, had thirty five hundred last year. Bingo. And nineteen touchdowns. But the big issue, what I think is going to hold him back, is interceptions, man. This kid cannot stop. The, he threw twenty five interceptions in his first two seasons starting at Southern Miss. It's okay. Jameis Winston threw thirty in one season. Uh, it, yeah, and Jameis Winston's a backup now. <laughs> but you know, it, it does help that Abraham does have his top target back in Tim Jones at wide receiver. He's going to bring a lot of explosion to this Golden Eagles offense. He had 21 broken tackles after catch last year, Brandon, which ranks second in the country, but only behind Jamar Chase. I got to say, that's pretty good when you're second to Jamar Chase, who won the Bolitnikoff last year. The right. problem I have with Southern Miss, Brandon, that offensive line is god awful. God, they are. And let me look. I have one more issue with Southern Miss, and I, I wish I didn't, but. It's tough to not have a spring, like, to not have the spring training and everything leading up to the season, especially when you have a new offensive and defensive coordinator. Yeah. So, you know that maybe those relationships aren't quite there. I understand right. the players can communicate still, but I mean, I mean, it's so much different when you're playing for playing for a coach than it is just talking to them and growing a relationship. I, I mean, can you look at me dead in the eyes and tell me? that Florida State's going to live up to maybe what their expectations were before COVID. Because, I mean, take away the controversy. Take away all that. I mean, but they just get a brand-new head coach, and they don't know this guy that well. Like, they get to know him a little bit, but they've never played under him. Right. But, I mean, right. Brandon, this offensive line ranks 129th out of 130 FBS teams. That's yeah, I, I don't know how much it, 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 there's only one team in the country that has a worse offensive line than this, according to the experts. I don't even know who it is. I didn't want to research it and hurt your feelings like that, but just know they are 129th out of 130. And listen, that's a problem to me because if Abraham already has turnover problems, if he's rushed and he's got to get out of the pocket and make quick decisions, that could really, really inflate that interception number. So I need to see some offensive line development, but listen. If there's a team that would only helps this issue, that's South Alabama, guys. They're they're projected a grand total of three and a half wins this year. Their offense and defense both rank outside the top 100 in college football. Their offense is 121st out of 130 in terms of production. Defense oh. 103rd. So it so it's their offensive line that's 130th. Yeah, I, they might be. <laughs> you no, know, actually, actually, you know, you're gonna be upset. Their offensive slime ranks 106th. Oh, yikes. So that's tough. Their rushing attack ranks 124th. Their pass rush ranks 110th. I mean, this team has holes everywhere. I mean, Desmond Trotter does return at quarterback, but he's got too much weight to carry. He's a really, really talented kid, but you can't carry a team that has no help. I mean, if you just go out there with a bunch of walk-ons, you're not going to do any. Uh, you're not going to have anything to work with. So Southern Miss is the better team by far. Southern Miss should have a little bit of confidence built here for that offensive line because there's no one on that <laughs> South Alabama team that should be getting to the quarterback. Southern Miss and Southern Miss big. I'm saying Southern Miss wins 56 to six. <laughs> 56. Okay, is that? I mean, that, that's that's yes. generous. Because I was going forty-two, I was going forty-two seven, but fifty-six six it is. Let's go to the top. Oh man, that's a it's tough, man. I feel bad for South Alabama. That new coach is out of there. But Eastern Kentucky, Marshall Brandon, we're gonna just kind of glaze over this game. There's not really? even a spread. There's not oh, even you a stole spread. That. You stole that from me. There's no, I not have it in my notes. I yeah, have I'm it so in my mad. Notes. There's not a spread. I'm so mad about this. I'm incredibly upset. Because uh, in my notes, I just wrote, I guess Marshall's like a one million point favorite because there's no spread. And I take that bet. I would take Marshall by a million in this game. I mean, you know, Brandon, the only notes I have on this is just how outrageous Marshall's offensive line is. They have a new starting quarterback in Grant Wells. Brandon, their offensive line ranks 11th in the entire country. You know what? You know what I'll say about this game? Um, Marshall. Uh, it, it's at Marshall. No, I won't say what I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, we it's might get canceled. <laughs> we might good. get canceled. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, but Brandon, this offensive line, these are the two top offensive linemen in this unit. Kane Madden, Brandon, 
338 pounds, was the top-rated guard in the conference last season. Yeah. And then next to him, you have Josh Ball, who's 6'8", 350, and was the number one run-blocking offensive lineman in the conference and the eighth-best pass-blocking offensive tackle. Like crazy, <laughs> six nice. eight three fifty. Like that. How is this kid playing at Marshall? Playing, this, that's what I was about to say. Jeez, that's it's crazy. But listen, they have a lot of holes at skill positions. They have a lot of younger players that need to develop. Eastern Kentucky is a great D two team, I guess is what you could say. They're an average D two team. They're overmatched here, even in terms of a young Marshall team. Brandon, I got Marshall. I don't even want to put a score on it because it's just going to be disrespectful. Yeah, to let's, Kentucky. let's not disrespect Eastern Kentucky here, but I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> also picking Marshall. <laughs> I hope so. But, guys, we're going to move on to another game here. This is probably the closest game we're going to cover today, and that's Middle Tennessee at, at Army. Last time I checked, Army was a three-and-a-half-point favorite, and this, this game's going to be close here. So, Brandon, who are you taking and why? It's weird as a three and a half point game because I picture Army as just like a much better team for some reason. And I know that they're not. Like my dumb brain keeps telling me, let's go Army. And so I'm going to go Army. I'm going to respect the troops here. Um, okay. So I'm going with Army and the triple option. They're going to lead me to victory. Hey, that's fair enough. I mean, Why? The, hey, they're returning a lot of talent. That's a good pick. They're 30th out of all 130 Division I teams in terms of offensive rating. They have the 13th best offensive line in the country as well. But, Brandon, that defense, they have the 126th ranked defense out of 130 teams. Yeah, so I don't know what the over-under on this game is, but uh, let's go over. Oh, it's, it's going to be bad. Hang on. We haven't even got to Middle Tennessee yet. So, Brandon, they rank 129th in their pass rush ranking and 109th in their secondary. That's garbage. Well, listen, we'll cover the positives for Army first. Artis Hobbs the fourth, returning running back, explosive. He's been in this system for a while. He's going to make a huge impact in this game. And then also they also have a new starting quarterback, Javari Laws Jr. He's going to step into the role, but he has already proven he can run the system. He had over 400 yards rushing last year as not even the, the main starter for this Army team. But listen, don't worry because Middle Tennessee is the exact same team as Army. Brandon, they have a top 70 offensive ranking, a 23rd quarterback rating, but their defense ranks 125th. They have the 127th pass rush and the 108th secondary. So they're ranked back-to-back in all these categories for better or worse. I mean, yeah. but the, re the reason this spread's so tight, Brandon, is Asher O'Hara, the quarterback from Middle Tennessee, is back. He's going to be a blast to watch, guys. If I know Army, Middle Tennessee might not be a game the average fan tunes into. This game is going to be exciting. This kid right. is just threw for 2,600 yards, Brandon, ran for another 1,000, put up 29 touchdowns and eight interceptions. Brandon, he ranked fifth in the country in runs of 10 yards or more after contact, and that included running backs. I mean, that's nuts. I, and you know who I bet finished ahead of him is Malcolm Perry, who Army does not have this season. And it's going to be a huge uh, blow to their uh, offense. Mac, Mac, Malcolm Perry play, played for Navy, my guy. Same thing. But, uh, same thing. It's just like they're all served together, huh? They just like can trade yeah. players throughout the season. <laughs> but the, the thing that get, is going to cost Middle Tennessee State this game, I think, is their offensive line. It, as bad as both defenses are, Middle Tennessee State's offensive line is 109th in the country. That's terrible. It's going to make O'Hara be mobile when he doesn't need to be, and he's going to be overthinking stuff. And I think Army controls the clock with that run game. They're going to be able to dominate this horrible defensive line for Middle Tennessee State, and Army's going to take this win. I have Army 21 to, oh, 21 to 10. How about that? Oh, so they do cover the spread. Okay, I like that. Um I'm going to be a little bit more generous. I'm, I'm going to go, let's, let's say, I don't, ah, this is tough because I don't, even though both of these offenses are good and the defenses are awful, I don't think these two offenses are very high score, which you've already kind of chosen with your pick. So I'm going to go uh, 18 to 10. Okay. Hey, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. But guys, Next game, we only got two left, and we're going to head to the AAC here. We have SMU 
a 22 point favorite over Texas State. And shockingly, you know, I just want to say this whoever was negotiating this game for Texas State, I need you to hit me up on uh, my cell phone <laughs> right now because how did SMU, who was a top 20 team last season, end up playing at Texas State? Ah, man. It's, it's got to be weird things are happening. It's either got to be recruiting or there's some recruits from that area that it would be cool for them to play in front of like their home fans because they're about three hours apart. So I can see it maybe for something like that, but there's no reason SMU should be playing at Texas State. And I don't think and I don't think the fans at Texas State are gonna have much to cheer for here, Brandon. No. I, and you 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 actually had the spread right on this one. So I'm proud of you for that, Zach. But no, I'm improving in little in, in just like small increments. You're you're becoming more and uh, more of a degenerate every single day. I'm rubbing off on you, and, and uh, I'm glad. I'm glad to do that. But, um, dude, SMU's going to kill them, right? I mean, 22 points. That's it's, it. Shouldn't it, I'm surprised. I don't know how this. I don't know how this game had a spread. I don't. If, yeah. If, 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 we're, <laughs> if we're sparing Eastern Kentucky, why can't we spare poor Texas State? I think, I think we might have to, man. It's it's, it's not looking good for them. Um, I don't know. I, I look. And I knew Texas State had a football team, uh, but only because – and, Zach, I don't know if you remember this. This is uh, this is very relatable for everyone. But you and I, at, at our first job um, in Mobile when we were in high school, we uh, we knew a lady who just wore a Texas State shirt to work, like, every day. And I was like, who are they? Yeah. She goes, oh, that's it's, – it's a football team I like. I'm like, oh, they have a football team? She said, yeah, yeah, they do. So that's how I know they have a football team. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I, they're newer. I think, if I'm not mistaken, they're they're not one. They're they're not, I guess, established. They're kind of like South Alabama. They didn't start that long ago. But oh, guys, so I mean, I mean, so SMU does return uh, Shane Bouchel at quarterback. He returned Reggie Robinson at wide receiver. They both put up extraordinary numbers last year. I mean, uh, Shane ranked third in the country in deep ball throws over 20 plus yards. And Robinson was tied at number one in the country with Jamar chase in terms of deep target grades by pro football focus. That's a pretty, pretty stout I, uh, stat there, but the rushing attack is going to be very young, very inexperienced. They need help there. The linebackers have to step up. That was a big weakness that killed them against Memphis because they could not stop game well in that offense because the linebackers were always on a mismatch. The young talent could be something to watch there, but I expect them to develop throughout the season. But listen, Texas State has no chance, guys. And I expect SMU to only play their starters maybe a half, maybe three quarters since the COVID, uh, I guess, altered all season could have changed some things. But SMU takes this one. I have SMU 49 to 6. I'm going to go SMU 96 to 3. I like that. Okay. 96 to 3. I like it. You know what? If that happens, you know, I will I'll, I'll quit the podcast if you hit that on the head. I will So guys, I'll, we're all rooting we're all rooting for 96 to 3 here this weekend. Dang. Okay. I was like, well, a little bit of feelings hurt there, but it's fine, it's fine. But um you know, we got one more game here, guys. It's Arkansas State at Memphis. Memphis is a 19-point favorite. And, man, you know, I think the first thing we have to talk about, Brandon, Kenny Gainwell opts out of the season for Memphis. How big of a loss is that in your opinion? Uh, it's huge. <laughs> I mean, it, I don't know. It, it makes sense that the all-stars on teams are opting out because they have a lot, I, I guess, like they have a lot of draft stock already. They don't, why would you – stay and risk injury risk i mean anything to play this season that i mean a right. lot of people in their books i mean not necessarily ours but in their books think could be like an asterisk season you know why would they do that if their draft stock's already there now in the future and i can see into the future i know we're going to talk about one certain player we have a lot of uh a lot to say about him but yeah. In, in his case, it makes sense. In, in this case, it makes a lot of sense. You know, he's – what I mean, where where do you see him going in the draft? Out of Memphis? Uh, I see probably second or third round. That's pretty good. I, That's pretty I, good for – I think he's a first-round talent, but honestly, he'll probably go second or third round just because his position isn't – I mean, when's the last time we saw a running back really go 
early first round. I mean, it's been a minute. I mean, Claude Edwards Hilaire, I believe, was the old was it was he the only running He's back the taken? Only in the first one. Round? And he was what was he the 32nd pick? Yep. Yeah, and you so. see, I think I think Kenny Gainwell is something like that because he is, I think he's, I think actually think Kenny Gainwell is a better Clyde Edwards Hilaire in my opinion, because I think he's better at receiving and he's more explosive. He's much faster. I think Edwards Hilaire is probably more physical, but I don't think he has the explosion explosion of Gainwell. I mean, Brandon Gainwell last year, in my opinion, I, I know you were really high on him too. I thought he was the best player in the AAC last year. Uh, that's that's a very bold take, but uh, I, I, I know I that know. you were high on him. I know you were high yeah. on him. I, 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 don't I, I was very, but Brandon, only running back last year that produced an 85 or higher grade by Pro Football Focus in both rushing and receiving. I mean, that's good if you're Pro Football Focus. I mean, they I mean have okay, a- that's fine. And, and listen, hang on. He also was responsible for 37 plays of 15 yards or more, which was second in the country for a running back. Yeah, good stuff, dude. Good, that's, hey, hey, good that's job. Real good stuff. That's real good stuff. You know what? I, I, I'm patting myself on the back here, but proud of you. <laughs> but listen, they still have Demonte Coxie at wide receiver. They still have Brady White at quarterback. Um, White's coming off a 4,000 yard season, 33 touchdowns, and Coxie two straight years over 1,100 yards receiving. I have Memphis big in this one. Arkansas State is really good. I think they'll do really well in their conference, but Memphis is just a whole step up in terms of competitiveness. So I think Memphis takes this one. They do cover. I think Memphis wins 45 to 20. 45 to 20. I'm going to go Memphis. I think this is a really high scoring game um, because it's Memphis and Arkansas state and people don't talk about how good Arkansas state is enough. They usually win whatever conference they're in, or at least the past few seasons. Is it the Sun Belt or the MAC? Who knows? It's one of those. Uh, it's the Sun Belt, right? But yeah. uh, let's go. I'll go 66 to 21. I think it's really high. Ooh, 66, man. If Memphis puts Memphis, up 66 long. without Gainwell, I'm going to lose it. It happen. All right. Uh, let's see. I don't know. But, guys, we're moving on to another segment. Brandon already That's highlighted right. this early. Let's go, go. ahead. Go All ahead. right, guys. Let's do it. Um, oh, man, I'm, I'm way too excited for this one, even though uh, it was the next one that I'm really super excited for. But now it's storyline of the week. You know, we're already back. It's back to the OGs. It's uh, Zach and I is our favorite thing. Who do you, who should go first, Zach? I mean, you know both of our storylines, and I know you have a lot to say about both. Uh, whichever one you have more to say about, let's save that for last. I uh, I think I have more to say about yours, so we'll save yours for last. All right, go ahead, uh, my storyline of the week, it really is not even of the week. It's of today. It's of since, I believe, 3 p.m. Um, but Jamie Newman, Ch- Wake Forest transfer to Georgia. You know, he was supposed to be the whole reason everyone's picking Georgia to win the national championship. They thought he was all this and that, and he was going to win the starting job. Well, JT Daniels gets declared eligible, and I don't think it's a coincidence that Jamie Newman opted out today. And, you know, yeah. you can call me crazy. And, you know, I, it pisses me off because I see all these experts saying, well, now I don't know about Georgia. Now I don't know about Georgia. And it's like you had more confidence in Jamie Newman than JT Daniels. It's so, it's so stupid. Uh, you know, I don't think other than maybe a little bit of mobility, I think JT Daniels does everything light years better than Jamie Newman. Yeah. And he's proved it in actual Power Five conference. He hasn't proved it at well, Wake Forest. He's, he's, yeah, I feel bad now, but he's proven it at on like a larger scale than Jamie Newman has. I mean, he mm-hmm. played at Wake Forest. I mean, how much does it take to be a star at Wake Forest? And I mean, let's ask he, Chris Paul. I must say, and and he didn't even. I, I think he rotated a little bit with Sam Hartman, who's going to be the quarterback now for Wake Forest. So it's like, was he even a clear dominant player? And I hear, I I know some people who like ACC football a lot. And I hear that, you know, Jamie Newman's really good. Jamie Newman's this, Jamie Newman can dominate ACC. And it's like, did he really dominate? Can y'all name the last time Wake Forest won a big game? I mean, did he dominate the Florida States? Did he dominate the Clemson's? Did he dominate the UNC's? I mean, do you trust him to dominate Florida Alabama, I mean, LSU, I mean, I don't expect him to dominate anybody in terms of that. And I really think I, I'm, I know that I'm probably one of the only people in this boat. It's real roomy over here in this boat. I'm one of the only people who think that 
he opted out because he knew he could not beat JT Daniels out for the starting job. I mean, it's a, it's a good boat to be in. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. You know, the second you said that, I was like, yeah, it does make a lot of sense. Um, right. One thing I'll say is what is he thinking, right? I, I mean, I understand he might get beat now, but at least, I mean, you have a shot. Now you're declaring for the draft after a mediocre season at Wake Forest. So yep. what it was an NFL, what is an NFL uh, uh, franchise or GM going to think of that? <laughs> What's he going to think of your draft stock now? Uh, you potentially, if you would have won that starting job, had the chance to go first round, had the chance to maybe even go top 10, uh, potentially, but right. you didn't. You you opted out, and now where's your draft stock at? Now you're going to get drafted oh, zero. third, fourth, maybe even fifth round now. You know, I actually think he could. Someone's going to reach, man. I'm just telling you. Someone's going to reach in the late. It's going to be just like a Jordan Love situation. Someone's going to reach late in the first and be real disappointed with the product they get. I mean, I was seeing scouts say that he was going to be a top 10 pick. And I was like, in what world? What are y'all seeing? And, you know, it really, really blows my mind that people aren't respecting JT Daniels because, you know, Brandon, you're an LSU fan. How many reports have you read about Arik Gilbert dominating LSU's camp? Uh, none. I've, I've read Eric Gilbert dominating okay. the camp, though. Same thing. Dominating camp. As an Auburn fan, I've read about Mark Anthony Richards dominating camp. Anybody who's dominating a camp, you hear about it. You've probably read reports about Miles Brennan doing good or bad. It would terrify me if I didn't have any reports coming out of uh, about a player, especially a transfer quarterback who people think might be a Heisman contender. That's so crazy. It it blows my mind that he would he would opt out this season. I and saw, so I, late too. Why so late? I, I'm telling you, I I've read. I was reading this insider thing, and he was like, you know, I haven't heard anything about how he was picking up the playbook, how he was performing at practices, and it's like, what if JT Daniels was taking over that job, and he was just like, all right, I'm out. I'm not going to lose this job. I mean, Zach, you and I have been saying this from the jump when JT Daniels decided to transfer to Georgia. There was going to be a serious threat. And yep. personally, I thought he was going to take the starting job. I believe that you thought that too, or that he should yep. take the starting job at least. It it blows my mind that he didn't. I mean, the second he was declared eligible, uh, someone should have stepped in and been like, you know what? I think he might be the guy. Right. And, you know, it. it the other thing that gets me is I've seen people say now – I don't know who's going to win the national championship. I don't know if Georgia can compete for the SEC. And it's like, for me, I was I was talking to one of my friends um, the other day, and he we were talking. He has Georgia going to like the national championship because of Jamie Newman. And I'm like, I have Georgia losing three, two, two or three games with Jamie Newman. Like that's how I don't think he's that good. But if they put JT Daniels in the starting lineup, I think this team could win the national championship. No, I, they honestly just got a lot better, <laughs> really. I mean, yep. really and truly. And you know what? What if, what if Justin Fields goes back, man? He was he was at their camp, right? Uh, you know, listen, as good as Justin Fields is, I'm sticking with JT Daniels over Justin a one year rental over Justin Fields. He's a he's a better he's a better true pocket passer. Uh, a thousand like, percent way and, better. And we see Georgia system. I mean. There's a reason that they thought Jake Fromm was the better fit over Justin Fields. They don't yeah. want a kid, they they don't want a kid like Justin Fields at quarterback. And you know, speaking of Justin Fields, Brandon, you know, I'm just gonna like smack my head against the wall here because it makes me so mad. I saw something today where they like there was a report about Justin Fields transferring to Georgia, and they said he was by far, non question, the best player in college football. And I'm saying, I mean, I was like, wait, what? I mean, it's crazy. Get out of here, man. It's not even, it's not even a conversation that Trevor Lawrence is that much better than him, but I don't think he's, I don't think he's by far and away the second. I mean, I think there's a lot of quarterbacks that are right up there with him, And it really, really blows my mind that people think Justin Fields is that good. But guys, Jamie Newman opts out for me. I think it makes Georgia a better option. And I think I, I you know, I'm re about we're, getting ready to make predictions for the playoffs here in, a, in just a, like a week or so here on the Blue Bloods. I have to reconsider. I thought I had my four picked. I thought I had my conference champions picked. But if 
JT Daniels is starting back for Georgia. I think they are a real, real threat to get to the national championship now. Yeah, I mean, it could definitely happen. I mean, like I just said, I think that Georgia has become became a much better football team. And I, I think they win games that they might have previously, you know, maybe battled for. And I won't I won't right. say which games right now. Uh <laughs> You know, we'll, to, we'll, to, we'll do that very, very soon. Well, you know, we might even go. make that a live stream. We'll, we might make all our conference predictions a live stream for you guys. Let us know if that'd be something y'all are interested in. So let us know if you want to live stream all the predictions for the 2020 season. But Brandon, your storyline of the week, it's up. I have some opinions about it. I know you have some opinions about it. So let's go ahead and get into that. Well, I don't know how you couldn't have opinions on it. I mean, it's just... <laughs> you know, you mentioned now your you mentioned now your storyline came about today. I mean, mine's also storyline of the day. It might be a bigger storyline of the day because the Big Ten yep. must feel really left out about right now because they're, I mean, uh, according to Dan Patrick, the Big Ten could start playing football on October 10th now. So I don't know what happened. It went from not playing at all to Thanksgiving, or I'm sorry, to postponing to winter. To yep. then they were like, let's do Thanksgiving. Now it's October. I mean, it's just a matter of time before they're playing this weekend, right? And then our pick six is gonna look silly, right? So, uh, man, it it just it kills me, man. Like, are you serious? Because no one's gonna cater to you now. All of a sudden, you can come and play. Look, I'm not going to criticize them, Zach. I know you want to criticize them so bad. Oh, I'm going to criticize them. Like, it's not, not even gonna, a question. I won't criticize them. I normally would, but I'm a man of my word. I stick to my principles, and my principles are more football is better. And so let's get that 11 a.m. Ohio State, Iowa kickoff. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm there for it. If the Children's Hospital is involved, count uh. me in. I'm at every single game. And so I'm, I'm just kind of glad it's happening, you know. I, I wish it would be sooner. I wish they would start at September 26th. I wish their start date would be the SEC start date or maybe the week after, like we mentioned in the last episode. Uh, okay. Do you think they're just saying this to satisfy the critics or do you think this is actually a possibility? Because I don't think Kevin Warren is going to eat his words and put on a season right now. I don't I don't know why this information would have came out if he wasn't willing to do it because it, it's just going to ruin his reputation even more if this doesn't happen. Well, leak stuff has come out all the time. At first, there was a leaked information that there was not a vote. Then that was a unanimous vote. Then that Iowa and Nebraska were the only two teams. And then it came out that it was really 11 to 3. So apparently, somebody's leaking bad information constantly. Or it's just Kevin Ward not deciding what the vote was because it's really not real. And it just it makes me so mad because like no one's – okay, Scott Van Pelt did – Paul Fama did, but what did you expect? Paul Fama was waiting for any opportunity to cuss out the Big Ten. Let's be honest. I was about here. to say, I mean, you have to take hey, this is Dan Patrick we're talking about. We're yeah. Paul Feinbaum is like the TMZ of of sports <laughs> media. You can't trust him. You, he's That's a he's fact. he hears something and he's spewing it. Dan Patrick's a little bit more classy. I'll say classy and okay. more well respected in the business. I'll say. And I don't okay. think that he would just put that out there without knowing that it was a reputable source. They told him. I, I don't know, bro. I, I I don't know. Um, let me let me have this, Zach. I want football. I want football back. No, and okay, you're no, trying no, no, to, you're no, trying, no, no, no. You're trying to steal football from me. <laughs> and I, you're I'm take, not gonna let it happen. You're, you're taking my criticism the wrong way. My criticism is there's no reason that this couldn't have been the initial plan. Why did yeah. we have to go? and create lawsuits why did the players have to protest why why are players gonna start transferring opting out all this stuff why did you have to cause all this chaos just to do what you could have could have and should have done in the first place yeah, that's uh, that's where my big problem is is it's so so stupid the fact that we had to go through all of this and then you put your teams at a disadvantage Auburn, LSU, all these teams, you're in Alabama and Georgia and all these other teams, they've been practicing. They didn't get sent home. They've been preparing like they're going to play a game in two weeks. And I mean, they are, but Ohio State hasn't been preparing for games. Michigan hasn't. They could have been working out, but they haven't been 
actively putting on pads and stuff because that's been shut down. Auburn's in pads, LSU's in pads, Georgia's in pads, Oklahoma's in pads, Clemson's in pads. That's a huge, huge disadvantage for Big Ten. You, so, what? You cannot, Go ahead. You, you cannot tell me Ryan Day has not had those kids out there in pads yet. I know it, he's it, not supposed listen, to. You're no. telling me he hasn't. You know, he hasn't because he knows Jim Harbaugh has his car and house bugged. Jim Harbaugh <laughs> already dry snitched on some BS that didn't even matter. <laughs> yeah, and he said he's gonna ha- he was gonna hang a hundred on them. I, yeah. I would like to see them. I would like to see him hang two hundred <laughs> on them. And so that's why and, I'm hoping this information gets leaked next. You know, if they announce the season is going to start, I'm going to be highly suspicious of the Big Ten because you release your schedule. You cancel the season less than seven days later. Then you cause all this chaos, get sued by parents, sued by players. People are protesting you. People are calling for Kevin Warren's job. And then all of a sudden, the plan is back on just one week pushback. Well, I mean, look, let's do it. I don't understand why you hate football so much. No, 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 no. I want it to happen. My issue no, is it with Kevin sound Warren. Like you do. It Listen, sound like you I do. want Kevin Warren on this podcast so bad because it is going to be a legendary podcast is I have some serious questions. If well, you have I, Kevin Warren's number, hit me up. We can even do it in the streets. I don't care. We could do this interview wherever. I will go to where, where's the Big Ten headquarters in Indianapolis. I will drive from Manhattan, Kansas to Indianapolis for this interview because I want to know what actually happened. And that just could be the skeptic in me. That could just be, I hate the Big Ten, but Kevin Warren has upset me and I took it personal and now I need answers. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm still <laughs> I'm still putting on for more football, for more three and outs okay. and and more uh, and more children's hospital waves. Who's gonna wave to the kids, Zach? There's no Big Ten football. Uh, uh, you know that is very yeah. disappointing. It's you know, sad. That, you know, it's so sad. <laughs> Man. I'm dead. Uh, Oh, but before I bring up my last point, this kind of thing, guys, if you are tuned in, submit your questions to the chat. We have fan questions coming up. We are answering all your biggest college football questions. So put those in the chat. So we have those to answer in a little bit. But Brandon, uh, 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 I guess like a twist on this is what, where's the Pac-12? Did, did they did they just hired they no, no Brandon they, they just hired a new commissioner to get them like in order and now like they just disappeared I don't even know if Oregon exists anymore Ah uh, man like the state or the school school because I'm not sure about either um, yeah, that's true that is a fact I don't I don't know I, and you know what the issue with that is is that I guess outside of Oregon there's not really a contender in the Pac-12. And so we're not right. worried about them. Also, well, I mean, I mean USC was going to be really good this year. I think USC would have taken a big step forward this year. Yeah, I mean, we love Keaton. Everyone knows that. Keaton, if you're <laughs> listening, if you're listening, <laughs> come on. Can, come on the pod. <laughs> it could be a lot of fun. But I don't know. I, I, I mean, there's an obvious reason that they're not getting as much news. And it's because, one, the contenders just aren't there. Right. And, two, they're not even, like, close to an agreement like even if their commissioner said today hey let's play like their players would be like no let's not until we get this whole players rights situation sorted out and the big 10 just isn't dealing with that nearly as much and and they're way closer to playing and so that's why we're hearing so much about this right now man that must have been such a unified movement man we haven't heard a single player a single coach a single parent a single AD, a single fan. Nobody has even mentioned in like the Pac-12 was like, "I right, we're done," and everyone just said, "Cool, we pack it up. Let's let's head home." Yeah, uh, I mean, um, no, I mean, there's NFL prospects who could make room. Javon Holland, Keaton Slovis, Jaden Daniels, Kayvon Thibodeau. I mean, there are some real players out there. I haven't heard a single thing from anybody. Not a single thing about. Hey, they canceled the season. Because even if it's about the movement, I would expect a player to speak up and be like, this is because they don't want to give us our money. This is because they don't want to address our issues. The Pac-12 just like wiped themselves clean and they said, hey, we'll be back next year. They're just they're doing the XFL. They're saying like, listen, we're shutting down and that, that's a wrap. But it just blows my mind because the Pac-12 is a Power 5 conference. And, yeah. you know, and they have some of the biggest – and biggest medical, I mean, do you don't think Stanford has some technology to help with this? Could have some has some information on COVID that would be important. 
I would beg to differ on that UCLA. You're not going to contribute. I mean, yeah, yeah. Listen, I know Arizona State don't have nothing, doesn't have anything to contribute. They're just down there drinking, partying out in the desert. But like, that's actually where where COVID started. Like, <laughs> exactly. Arizona State, Arizona. I mean, it, it just, I, it doesn't. I guess makes sense to me. I guess because like I'm not just, uh, just an average fan that watches my favorite team. Like I stay up for Pac-12 after dark. I watch BS games. Like I watched every single second of the game last week. You think a lot of people watched every single second of Austin P in Central Arkansas? I would bet not. I but didn't. I mean, it, it was an amazing game. I was very excited. But yeah. for me, like I want to, I want the Pac-12 to play because it's mostly okay. And for a selfish reason, it's because I had Oregon going to the playoffs and I know no one else did. So I want to be proven right. But another part of me is like, I mean, I do like, I, I do want to see like a unified national championship. I know we had that whole thing on our last episode where it was like, uh, I don't know, like, does it matter? Like the asterisks and all that, like, I would like to see it. But if the big 10 plays and the Pac-12 sits out, there's no asterisk, man. That like you had a chance if everybody, including Austin P and Central Arkansas and Eastern Kentucky, like we saw earlier play, then the the Pac-12 can play. Stanford, Oregon, USC, Arizona State, they have the facilities. Utah, they all can play, and they're just dragging their feet, man. And I think that's that's getting lost in the shuffle. But listen, if the Big Ten can get this together, let's get it rolling. And I'm interested to see how these Big Ten teams look. And because, you know, yeah, Ohio State might have had players in pads, but I promise you Rutgers didn't. No. Well, Rutgers hardly ever has players in pads, even when there's not a pandemic. But guys. They, just, they just have random people out there. They're like, hey, listen, if, if you, you know how, like, um, at certain college football games, like, sections will win, like, food or something from, like, the scoreboard? They just pick a section each day to play in the football game, and that's how Rutgers <laughs> fields a team. They find some kids in the parking lot. Um I mean, guys, let's just hope for more Big Ten football. Just more football in general is good. Uh, but for now, we're going to move on to everyone's favorite segment. It's Brandon's Gambling Corner. Uh, I know typically this is a really fast segment, but I, I don't think that would play uh, on the live stream. I feel like people want to actually listen to us. I might edit some music behind us in the, for the show. Who knows? Um, things might get electric, but Zach, Let's let's hear your picks. Let's, let's maybe win some people some money, or maybe get them in a lot of financial uh, uh, problems. So, I don't know. I feel like it. we did pretty. I feel like we did pretty good. Um, you know, before I start, guys, submit those questions. Uh, you know, fan questions are coming up. I know y'all have questions about y'all's favorite team. I know I have questions about all the recent college football news. We haven't done one of these in a while, so I so I know y'all got some questions built up. So put that in the chat, comment that, so we can answer your, all your questions. But Brandon, my first one, Memphis is going to cover over Arkansas State. That's an obvious one. So, you know, I'll skip that one, actually. Southern oh, no, Miss. No, 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 no. I want, I want you to stay on that. I want you to stay on that because I got uh, some bad. Okay, go ahead. Bad. Go ahead. Well, well, I mean, I just think it's more obvious that they're going to hit the over. Uh, I mean, well, 74 I, I, points I, is nothing. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's an over all day. And you know what? I've, I've mentioned it earlier, and I'll, I'll go back to it, but people sleep on Arkansas State. They usually win the Sun Belt, or at least they've won in previous seasons, uh, some pretty recent seasons. Memphis doesn't have a defense. Arkansas might not, like, literally might not have a defense. I'm not sure. I've never seen an Arkansas State football game. Um, or I, I have. I just It's not very memorable. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. This game, it has to hit the over, because if it doesn't hit the over, then football might not actually be back. Oh man! Yeah. Well, would that be disappointing? Football it, doesn't come back because Memphis didn't hit the over. It's like it's like Santa doesn't come on Christmas. You wake <laughs> up and there's no gifts. <laughs> okay, let's be honest here. My next pick, Brandon, Southern Miss obliterates the thirteen and a half point spread over South Alabama. They uh, they could they could quadruple the spread, and I guys, still think they could obliterate it. This this is what happens when there's like eight games on in a week and Zach and I just had the same gambling picks uh, because that was my lock of the day. Uh, I would say lock of the year, lock of the century, lock of the, whatever, whatever the case may be. I usually go with that, but I'm not going to put a lock of the, of the year on Southern Miss, South Alabama, but it is my lock. That is my absolute. I mean, it can't lose. Southern Miss is going to cover this spread. They're going to win by at least two touchdowns. 
if not four, if not eight, if not 12. So <laughs> go ahead, do what you need to do. Transfer your mortgage balance over to this oh, game God. because, I mean, that house is paid for after this one. Whew. Okay. Um, and, you know, the other obvious one, I think, is SMU just destroys a 22 point spread over Texas State. I think they are going to dominate this game. It's not, they might, it, this spread might be beaten at the end of the first half. Yeah. The, no, this it, is not even going to be remotely close in, no, in terms I, of like, if, if Texas State even stays within 30, that's a huge win for Texas State. Like, it's not out of the realm of possibilities. I, I see what you're saying. Um, I, I didn't pick that one surprisingly. So we only had two out of the three games similar. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I would also be willing to say that it's just not one of my picks. Um, slacking. So what well, slacking? I have one. I have another one. What do you mean slacking? You're telling me I'm going to slack on the gambling segment. I don't gamble guys. Don't get that. Don't get this twisted. Um, but if I did, <laughs> if I did, I'm just doing this for you guys. It's not even legal to gamble on sports in Louisiana, so why would I be putting my life in jeopardy? You know, I don't want to do that. You know, I, I play it by the books. But <laughs> my last pick, uh, and this, this sucks, man. We, I wish we had more football. Um, but I'm going to go with Central Arkansas covering that 19 point spread against UAB. This, this is what, this is what, this is what, what? you get. Central that, Arkansas is going to cover the 19 point happening. spread. That's not happening. You, I mean, you don't, you don't see a world where Central Arkansas can lose by two touchdowns or two no. touchdowns and a field goal. You don't see that no. world. I see that world. I see that world. I see that world. Not even going to be close. That's the world I want to live in. UAB is awful. People don't talk about it enough. Their football program might get canceled after this game again. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not personally putting money on it. I will advocate for it though. You should, if you, if it's legal to gamble in your state. Put sprinkle a little bit on this one. Nah, uh, I, I can't. You're gonna lose money. I'm just you, gonna tell you now. Did you did you even have a lock? You can't be talking when you don't have a lock. Uh, I have to pick a lock too. Well, um, I mean, yeah, you had to have a lock. Well, I mean, what kind of what kind of sports okay. podcast would we be? We're two 23 year olds. You tell me you don't have a gambling lock. My lock is Army. Covers the three and a half point spread. Oh, the there we go. Now that one's dangerous, but I like it. No, I that's like not dangerous. I mean, Army is going to just uh, Army is going to win this game. I already told y'all they're going to win this game by more than three and a half. But it's a Ar- lock. Yeah, it's a lock. It's not even. It's if it even comes to within ten, I'll be shocked. Are you are you, you going to put the are you are you going to put the mid- G word on it? It's a guarantee. Oh, it I mean, a, that means it guys, is a means- guarantee. That means I mean, money back if Zach's wrong. I mean, that's a fact. I will personally Venmo everybody. But <laughs> listen, when 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 Middle Tennessee has such a bad defensive line like it does, and that Army runs that triple option attack, there's no way Middle Tennessee is going to be able to stop them. And you, Brandon, you saw what happened when that cap when the army gets rolling they had a what was it a 14 and 58 second a 14 minute 58 second drive against navy last year it took up the entire quarter yeah that's fair and i and i do like the triple option a lot i mean that's 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 widely known yeah and you saw what a team like air force did to washington state who had a bad defense they had what was it like like 45 minutes of possession time that is just insane. And I think Army is going to run away, not run away with this game, but they're going to run that clock down. And Middle Tennessee State might have the ball three times. Ah, sure. Let, let's go with it. Let's <laughs> it's go a, with I, it. Can you bet on something like that? Like you bet on how many possessions a team's going to have? Uh, if I had to bet on something really fun, and this would be my last one, but I, I'd go with the over for fumbles by uh, by teams this week if you just had an over under for every single team and you had a number of fumbles and just i don't care what it is it could be a thousand go with the over because this is look we're getting football but we're not getting good football this weekend there's gonna be some fumbles there's gonna be some sloppy play and that's why we love football don't i mean we're getting two thursday night games thursday night weekday football means fumbles that means turnover so go ahead and put your money on that um is that gambler done with gambling corner? This is that it? 
at his gambling corner. There we um, go, guys. It gets so, more exciting, I promise. That, this is, <laughs> <laughs> What's the SEC and ACC get rolling, man? This, this is going to be electric. But last segment of the day, guys, submit your fan questions in the comments now. We're going to address them. I had two uh, submissions from Instagram Um earlier today they're about two different teams brandon so we kind of get put on the spot here well once about a player and the first one is um well hang on i gotta read it um okay um the first one is how do we th- like what is the ceiling for De'Aaron king at miami this season oh man it's so high i mean that's the thing i i'm a big Derek king fan um i've been a fan of him since the beginning of last season at least i, I mean at Houston, he did huge things um, until his coach was like, hey, you're going to sit the rest of the season, which I thought was just a bad – I mean, for him to even listen to his coach there, and I think that drove a lot of his choice to transfer to Miami. Um, but, I mean, it, man, being in that – being in a Power 5 offense, being in that Miami offense that already has a lot of potential, I mean, it's – Obviously, last season we saw it, untapped potential, but I mean, potential nevertheless. Right. Man, he has so many more weapons in this offense than he ever has at, at, at Houston. And so, I mean, I think that his ceiling, honestly, oh, man, that, that's tough. Because, uh, I mean, he's not going to win like ACC player of the year. I mean, there's, there's no. no chance. But, I mean, he could bring Miami, I mean, to one of the one of their best seasons in recent years uh, Miami hasn't been great by any stretch of the imagination but I mean you couldn't see him winning uh, how many games is ACC playing this year is, is 11. 10? 11 11 I mean you couldn't see them winning eight of those games if he plays at, at his top potential I could I could I could, yeah. I could see them I could see them maybe winning nine uh, it just depends. I mean, if he plays out, they're not going to be Clemson. Don't I mean, don't get that twisted. I was, I, was about to say, I don't know about. I don't know about. I don't know about nine. I, they they have some tough games. I mean, Notre Dame joined that conference. UNC is going to be good. Louisville is going to be good. That's nine is going to be. That's, that's but that if, if, if Miami wins nine, Manny Diaz deserves a raise because that is an excellent season with that roster. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so his ceiling, I mean, in short, is very, very high. But so is his floor. I uh, don't, you don't, don't just take me saying, "Hey, he could be this good," and saying, "Hey, he's going to be this good." Uh, he could be a total flop, <laughs> for all right. we know. I don't think he's going to be a flop, but he could be. Uh, we we don't know how he's going to react in this Miami offense. Like I said, they have potential, but it's untapped. So it, right, it, yeah, it, it, it's completely up in the air right now. I mean, I think their wide receiver units got to get better, man. Their biggest yeah. biggest weakness last year was their wide receivers. I, they just did not make plays. DJ Dallas is going at running back. That's a big loss there. That offensive line was absolutely awful. I mean, they beat Florida last year if that offensive line holds up. Yeah. That's that's how that's how much potential that team actually had. And so I think if you know he's he this guy he's this guy's asking, what is his ceiling? I think his ceiling is a. I think he can make a run at ACC Player of the Year. I mean, but I think it's a stretch. I think if if that his ceiling is finishing like second or third in ACC Player of the Year, I think I think his floor is those wide receivers don't help him out. That offensive line doesn't develop, and this dude is on the run. He ends up throwing a lot of interceptions. He gets sacked a lot. He can't utilize his legs to make plays down the field and make defenses be honest. So I think that's his floor, but ceiling is probably second or third place in the ACC. I think he can, th- I, I, it depends on how many Diaz uses them, man. And they do have a uh, Rhett Lashley. They got him out of SMU. He was also the former offensive coordinator for um, Auburn. So that offense is going to be the same offense that Jared Stidham had a really good year in a 2000, um, what was it? 17 when Auburn beat Alabama, Auburn beat Georgia. So can he make those plays? He fits the system better than Stidham. So his potential is that he could get Miami into contention for the ACC. He's got to have to play out of his mind. Losing Gregory Rousseau really, really makes me question their ceiling in terms of their defensive potential. So I think that puts even more pressure on De'Aaron King here. Yeah, absolutely. So what's the and next question? The other question I uh, <laughs> I think I know your answer to this, and it's 
what like what percentage odds do you give Texas to win the Big Twelve? Zero. Zero. Really? really? I, don't, I mean, not not really zero. Uh, I mean, in all honesty, I'd, I'd give Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Baylor better chances, all of them okay. better chances at winning the Big 12 than Texas. Texas might go in, in that fourth position, but okay. that's really low. That's really, yeah. really low. Especially um, for Texas. Especially for Texas. Because because I, I know some people who are picking them to make the playoffs, and that blows well, you, my mind. You have been talking to some uninformed <laughs> individuals that <laughs> – but not no uh, no hate no hate we lo- we love everyone but not that guy just not you as much um I don't know man it's their true percentage I'd give them like a ten percent chance maybe on a good day okay you know? I like ten you know I'll bump it up I'll bump it up to twenty I think I think twenty like you said Oklahoma Oklahoma State clear favorites here over Texas. I think Iowa State even could make a run here at the Big 12. I think Kansas State's not too far behind Texas. It depends on the development of their wide receivers. Depends on how they can replace Wyatt Huber on that defensive line. Josh Youngblood's there. That team has some potential. Chris Kleiman did an excellent job of building that team last year. And, you know, for me, Brandon, like I said on the on one of our last episodes, Baylor has a really, really underrated shot at making this championship. They were there last year. It was less than a year ago that Baylor was, what, a top eight team? They were yeah. playoff, playoff implications, and they had a huge lead. If they win that Oklahoma game, that team's a top four team going into conference championship weekend. They and, won one of those uh, Oklahoma games. <laughs> Yeah, Oklahoma's a big hold up there, but I think Oklahoma had the experience factor over them. But now you look at Oklahoma, they lose Kenneth Murray, they lose Jalen Hurts, they lose C.D. Lamb, they um, potentially lose Ronnie Perkins if he can't get his act together off the field. I think he's already suspended the first three games, but who knows if he just opts out because of that. There are holes all through this Oklahoma roster. Are they filled by kids with a lot of potential? Yes, absolutely. There's a lot of potential there, but I don't. It, I have to realize it. And with Oklahoma State, you got Chuba Hubbard at running back, the best running back in college football. Him and Etienne are right there. You also have Tylen Wallace, arguably one of the best wide receivers in the country, especially now that Jamar Chase is out of the like question. And then you also have Spencer Sanders. That's the biggest question mark for Oklahoma State. Can Spencer Sanders take that next step? Does he have to take a full step? I don't think so. He has to take a small step toward being more efficient over the middle of the field. And then Oklahoma, if, if Spencer Sanders takes that step, Oklahoma State might be unbeatable in the Big 12. They're that good. Yeah. They have two elite safeties, one being Colby uh, Harville Peel. He's elite. Um, and, you know, they have talent all over that roster. And f- for this thing, Brandon, for this whole thing, Big 12 doesn't play defense. There are some elite defenses in the Big 12 in terms of uh, um, Iowa State, Oklahoma State, Baylor. All these teams have really good defense. If K-State is pretty good on the defensive side of the ball. But with Oklahoma, can they take that next step on the defensive side of the ball? I mean, we saw what happened when they faced LSU. Yes, yeah. I, I I don't want to hear the excuse of, man, well, you saw LSU last year. Um Auburn didn't have a number one rated defense in the country. They did a pretty good job against that LSU um, offense. Florida did a hell of a job for three and a half quarters on LSU's offense. And, you know, Georgia had their issues. But overall, Georgia did an okay job, I feel like. I mean, toward the end, it got a little out of hand. But, I mean, they did, they only allowed, what was it, 37 points? Yeah, but, I mean, they only scored 10 so. Okay, I didn't say, I mean, when you have Jake Fromm at quarterback, yeah, you tend a decent score there, but Georgia's defense did okay. Alabama in the second half of that game did pretty good against that offense. So I don't want to hear that it was just LSU because Clemson did really good in the first half, and then Joe Burrow said, oh, enough of that, I need a ring, (laughs) and, you know, dominated. But, you know, it it really, really – is going to come. I, I think Texas 20 at most. And that's if Sam Ellinger has been working on his shoulders and can carry this team to the promised land. And 
I, I think I speak for me and Brandon. I am very, very skeptical of how far he can carry this team on his back. Yeah, no, I'm super skeptical. Uh, um, you know, and I think we have a troll here, Brandon. Uh, <laughs> I just got a question in, and it was directed at you. How do you feel about Jamar Chase's opt out? I, okay, so I didn't think we were going to do this today, but you got me upset. Uh, how do I feel? I feel like he's doing what's best for him as a player. I love Jamar Chase. I love LSU football probably more than most people. But I'm going to stick by my word. Uh, like I said earlier, even this episode, I say it all the time. I'm a man of my word. I'm going to stick uh, to my roots. And, and I, I think it's a good idea, honestly. What, what does he have to gain by playing this season? I mean, some. I mean, some people have him ranked as the number one overall draft draftee this year. So why? What are you going to do? You're going to go out there and, and try to catch passes from an un. I mean, but from an unproved Miles Brennan. Look, I'm high on the kid. I love Miles Brennan. I love anyone who puts on that purple and gold uniform. But I get it. He's not Joe Burrow. You're not going to have the same season you had last year. So why not end it on top? If you decide you don't want to go risk injury or go risk bodily harm in any any way, then don't. I mean, look, would I have liked him to play? Sure. Do I understand why he's not? Yeah, absolutely. And can I blame the kid for, for doing what's best for his future? No, no chance. Right. So that's, that's okay. right. So I, so I have to ask you, last question, we're wrapping this up, guys. No, no, we we're gonna run through some of these comments real quick. I know there, I know there's something, but we gotta love our fans. So, go uh, ahead, hit, hit me with the last real question. Okay, well, this is one, and we've already talked about it. Um, so, the mighty South. What are our thoughts on the highly anticipated matchup between the mighty South Alabama Jaguars and the lowly Southern Miss Golden Eagles? I've already said it, baby. To the top, look. There, what else is more? What more is there to say? Zach already said that that Southern Miss might quadruple the spread on South Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. It is a fact. All right, guys. I, you well, know, but listen, um, we appreciate all you guys tuning in. We're gonna end this show. Um, you know, you know, in, in you know, if you guys like this, let us know. Reach out to us because we could live stream more episodes. Uh, it's definitely a possibility. So um, well, let us know. Let us top. know. There you go. To the top, to the bottom, toward the end of the season. Oh, easy, easy. Um, but, you know, we do have a big announcement. Listen, there are there – are, the Blue Bloods have finally found a home with the Worst Take Network. Um, nothing on y'all is going to change. You can still find our episodes everywhere. They've been available. Our YouTube channel is going to stay the same. Literally nothing changes. All our social media stays the same. You could just now find the podcast on the Worst Take Network. There's a bunch of dope podcasts on there already. It's a podcast network with like 17, 18 podcasts, man. It's a it's a real tight knit group. Listen, we're giving y'all good sports content. Uh, it's it, all it, out it's, there. And it's man, listen. It's like Zach said, nothing changes on our end. The only thing that we get out of this, I mean, we join this network. We get a lot of connections. We. I mean, we're part of a network. How cool is that? A year ago, Zach and I started this podcast. A little yeah. bit over 100 episodes in, we found a home. We are now going to be we, – we can write articles for this network. We can yeah. produce podcasts for this network. We might even be able to expand, guys. There's a lot of news, um, and this is the biggest news that we've had. We told you guys we had a lot coming. Uh, well, I guess one more quick announcement. And it's, it's nothing bigger than that. That was the biggest announcement. But season two of the Blue Bloods will start next week with our next episode. On we have, day. Uh, we are rolling all new content out. Um, maybe sticking to our roots. Maybe rolling with some some pick six. Maybe some storylines. Football is back, as you know. So listen, guys. Everything's going to turn out for the best. We all love it. We are. Thank you so much. We got a congrats in the chat. Um, but yeah, guys, we, I mean, we did it. We, we've, 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 we peaked. Uh, we might have, man. we might have to go oh, back to high yikes. school now. This is bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but listen, one last thing. I'm, I'm not confirming nor denying these rumors. I've been asked by a few people when, when the SEC and ACC, Big 12 all really get going, 
there may or may not be more than two episodes a week. We will let y'all know once some details are worked out, but there are some rumors out there, but we will let y'all know very, very soon on that. But listen, I promise you, no matter what, that college football content is coming. Go check out the Worst Take Network. They got NFL podcast, NBA podcast, just total sports podcast. We're right now we are the sole college football content on the network. So make sure to tune in for us. We appreciate all y'all support, man. In case y'all don't know, social media is scrolling across the bot- bottom, but Twitter is at the underscore underscore blue bloods. Instagram is at the underscore blue bloods. Facebook, I know a lot of y'all are watching there at the blue bloods pod. YouTube, if you're watching there, you already know where to find it. But if you don't, it's the Blue Blood CFB podcast. Go find the page, subscribe. You can find a bunch of old episodes, interviews, all our live streams on there. But guys, go follow, like, rate, everything, social media, podcast episodes, YouTube channel, all that. Listen, we'll keep you all updated when another episode of the Audible is coming out. We appreciate y'all supporting. But for right now, we are out. <laughs>